new millenniums bring new dawns. They also inherit threats from the past. One is our continuing reliance on fossil fuels. Carbon emissions are changing our climate in ways that we cannot predict nor control. Yet we have the ability to substantially replace fossil fuels with renewable resources. Wind energy is one such resource, but its contribution in the UK is still minimal. Expansion of land-based wind farms is underway, but if wind power is to make an effective contribution to carbon reduction, we must exploit the wind in an entirely new location. The seas around these islands are some of the most windswept in the world. With the skills to harness these winds, we could create a new industry capable of meeting our energy needs and our environmental responsibilities. This is that new industry. A kilometre off the Northumberland coast at Blythe, the UK's first offshore wind farm nears completion. The developers hope it will be the first of many. The Blythe project has been developed by a partnership of four leading companies who bring with them skills in onshore wind development, offshore engineering and electricity trading. Land-based wind farms are clearly the platform for, for offshore growth, so we understand the, the economics of developing onshore wind farms. We are now applying that knowledge to move forward with our partners of AMEC Border Wind, Shell Renewables and Nuon to develop offshore wind energy. Shell is interested in renewables because we think that towards the middle of this century, renewable energy could uh, provide as much as half the energy demand of society. The first sign of the new project was the offshore construction platform Wiselift 6 at Blythe. My name is uh, Karl Beuerle, I'm coming from Germany. I stay now uh, 14 years on this barge as uh, skipper. I move the barge, position the barge, yak the barge. I do anything, I do the technical work. And uh, I think I have now plenty of experience uh, with all this equipment. Carl's barge will be home to a succession of construction crews. First come the drillers. The wind turbines are founded on monopiles, steel monopiles which are drilled into the rock. And part of the team subcontracted from AMEC is Seacor, who are specialists in installing steel piles in rocks. And you know they re really are the world leaders in this sort of technology. So they put together a plant which is capable of drilling a 3.7 metre diameter hole up to 15 metres deep. We have drilled before in uh, wind farms in Sweden, but this is the first time we've done it in UK waters. I'm hoping that we'll do a lot more of these. It's going to be an income for a lot of people, a spread over the future. It's obviously the, the, the future is this kind of power. Each turbine consists of five main components. Floated to the site on barges, they will be lifted into place by the wise lift. Built to last 20 years and to withstand the worst North Sea gales, the vast steel monopiles are the foundations for each turbine. The Blythe site will have two turbines, together generating up to four megawatts of electricity. Britain particularly has a vast offshore wind resource. Europe as a whole has a big resource. Britain has the best resource in Europe. Theoretically, you could get three times our entire electricity consumption from Britain's offshore wind resource. The sad thing is that Britain is actually lagging other European countries in terms of its approach to offshore wind. Governmental support in this country is at a much lower level and a much slower pace than other countries in Europe, but we have the biggest resource. 
the lifting team is part of AMEC and in this particular situation it's involved not just lifting off the barge and, and locating in position but lifting and rotating into the right orientation and then uh, installing and also lifting in conditions where the equipment is on a barge which could be moving quite significantly because of the swell. So it's a question of you know, judging when that lift can be safely undertaken and when not to do the lift conversely to make sure that no safety issues are, are caused. Well, what you see is that the companies cooperating here all have their own very strong safety culture. It's true for the oil and gas industry and it's true for the electricity industry. And the big challenge is to merge those two cultures into a new culture which is appropriate for offshore wind energy. And it will have its own attributes and people have to think through all the aspects of how do you do a job safely and how do you do it well rather than, if you like, using the existing blueprints. I've worked in the offshore environment for some years before this, but to me this has been a new challenge completely to me. This particular tower, I think that this first section we've just put up now, I think that weighed about 65 tonnes. So you're talking about serious weights when you've got it on the end of the crane with a bit of wind pushing it about a little bit. The lift itself is not a problem to anybody and the crane, and the crane driver can handle that quite well. The crucial part of course is when he's lowering off onto the, the section he's going onto itself, he's got to be careful, he's talking in uh, millimetres when it's touching down, that there's no damage onto either face of the uh, platform. Taking into consideration there's also people in there directing them onto them. And you're looking to get two boat holes lined up, so it's very critical at that point. One of the really interesting things about offshore wind is that the technology we're talking about, which is big technology to go into hostile marine environments, requires exactly the same kit and the skills and experience as, say, offshore oil and gas or indeed um, shipbuilding industries. These are skills which the industrial heartlands of Britain can well supply. So it's not just that we've got the resource, we've also got the industrial strengths to um, make this industry a success in Britain, indeed a world-beating industry in Britain. This is the first 2 megawatt turbine to be installed offshore anywhere in the world. 5,000 more could be sited around the UK coast, substituting 10% of our fossil fuel consumption. New schemes are being planned to tap this potential and build on the Blythe experience. I think that the lessons that have been learned are that specialist marine plant will be required to implement uh, larger scale wind farms where you've got larger numbers of machines to make sure that the installation can happen quickly within the available weather windows. In this situation where we're only installing two machines you can afford a certain amount of leeway with when the lifts can be done but I think for a large scale offshore installation with large numbers of machines it has to be an operation which can be done as quickly as possible within the available weather window. The major problem faced by the project was the North Sea swell. With a wingspan larger than a jumbo jet, the blades could not be lifted safely until the sea calmed. In future, alternative barges might be used, which could stabilise themselves like the wise lift by extending legs to the seabed. These blades will generate the electricity for over 3,000 homes and reduce our carbon dioxide emissions by nearly 4,500 tonnes a year. I stay a long time on this job, on my whole life on the sea. I stay before 30 years in the German Navy. And uh, when you're building windmills 10 years later, you see the windmills, you see, ha. Ah, I walk on this windmill, it is a good feeling all the time. There's a very big potential out there for installing large numbers of wind turbines offshore and it's going to require government initiative to make sure that that happens. But my feeling is that certainly sometime over the next decade there will be large scale implementation of offshore wind energy in the, in the UK. Blythe has been a great experience, it's been a learning experience and we're now wanting to take this forward to build bigger and better offshore wind farms with the rest of the UK industry. We've proved here that these turbines can be installed, there's no technical conditions that prevent them from being installed. 
and there's no reasons why large numbers of wind turbines can't be installed off other areas around the UK coast. We've got the team on board, we've got the technology, we've got the experience, we've proved that we can do it. There's nothing to stop us.